Hello friends. So in the previous video, we have just uh, discussed the voltage control, the stator voltage control of the induction motor. That is the speed control of the induction motor. Okay. So today we will do a couple of numericals, simple numericals, so that you get a hang of the subject. Okay. So now <coughs> in the first numerical, you can see it is basically a six pole induction machine. 6 pole induction machine is operating at 400 volt and 50 hertz. Okay, so we'll write down that. So P is equal to 6 and it is operating at 400 volt. So V1 is equal to 400 volt. Let us take V1 as 400 volt and the frequency is 50 hertz. And the speed corresponding to this uh, condition that is 400 volt and 50 hertz is 950 rpm. So we'll take N1 to be 950 rpm. Okay. And now what they are telling is when the voltage is reduced to 300 volt, find the motor speed for constant torque. So this is very important. Okay. So we already know. So what they are asking is that if the voltage that is, is reduced to 300 volt. So V2 is equal to 300 volt. They are asking what is the speed corresponding to this particular V2. And they have given that the load torque is constant. The load torque is constant. Okay. That means the induced torque also will be constant value okay so you know that there are uh, two equations that we know that is the we will take only one equation for the time being so the induced torque is proportional to s v1 square divided by r2 rr okay this is what we have seen now you know that the rotor resistance is not changing they have not given any information the only thing which is going to change is s1 and v1 and the induced torque is constant. So we saw in the previous video, we can write an equation like this. So S1 V1 square will be equal to S2 V2 square. So this is the basic equation for voltage control. Remember that this is the basic equation for voltage control. So for any uh, numericals related to voltage control, uh, speed control using voltage control, you will have to use this equation. Okay. So that is over. So we have to write this too. So basically what we have to do, you have to find the motor speed. That is you have to find N2. So N2, you know that it will be equal to Ns into 1 minus S2, right? N2 will be equal to Ns into 1 minus S2. So what is Ns value now? So Ns, you know that it is equal to 120 F by P. So have they given the data? Yeah, it is given 50 Hertz and pulse is 6. So 120 into 50 divided by 6. Okay, so this will be 1000 RPM. So Ns equal to 1000 RPM. Okay, so if you find the value of Ns, can you find the value of S1? Yeah, definitely you can find the value of S1. Why? Because S1 will be equal to Ns minus N1 divided by Ns, right? S1 will be Ns minus N1 divided by Ns. So what is Ns value? 1000 RPM, right? And what is N1 value? It is 950 RPM, minus 950 divided by 1000, okay? So this value here, slip value, hmm, let me see what you will get. It is 0 0.05. So I think you have got all the data. So S1, you know, it is 0 0.05. Okay. Multiplied by V1 square. So V1 value is 400. So 400 square is equal to S2 into V2 value is 300 volt. 300 square, right? So now S2 is equal to 0 0.05 into 400 square divided by 300 square, right? So if you find the S2 value from this equation, you will find the S2 value to be equal to 0 0.089. You have to do all these things on your own. Remember, I am looking at the notebook because I have done it once on my own. Otherwise, you will not practice. Okay. So the N2 value will be equal to Ns into 1 minus S2. Right. So this value Ns is equal. Ns is not changing. Frequency is not changing. Right. So 1000 into 1 minus 0 0.089. So depending upon whether you take 0 0.08 or 0 0.089, you will get N2 or uh, 2 or 3 different values. So now what for what I have taken, so it is 911 RPM. So if it's an objective question, uh, you might not see this 911 RPM directly, but you take the closest answer to this 911 RPM. Okay, so that is over. So we'll move on to the next question. The next question is a little bit more interesting. So what they have given is that it is a three phase induction motor and drawing full load. Okay, and it is driving. It's not drawing. It is driving. It is driving a full load which is independent of the speed. Okay, that means what they are telling is that the load characteristic, okay, the load characteristic is independent of speed. That means it is a constant load. So independent of speed means it is a constant load. So that itself uh, gives you an indication that you are going to use something related to speed control. Then what they have told, the line voltage drops to 90% of its rated value. They are asking, find the increase in the uh, motor copper loss. Okay, I already told you when the voltage applied decreases, 
at constant torque condition the current will increase and if current is increasing naturally the copper loss also will increase so we'll just write down what is given here so first they have told that the load torque is constant so that is one clue they have given and the next point is that see for example if the initial voltage rated voltage is v1 they have told that v2 is equal to 90 percentage of its rated value the voltage drops to 90 percentage so v2 is equal to 0.9 v1 okay 0.9 v1 and we have to find what is the increase in the motor copper loss so what is the increase percentage increase percentage increase in uh, rotor copper loss right so prcul right okay prcu rotor copper loss so this will be equal to so dip, because there are two currents now see current will naturally increase right current will naturally increase so what will get so this is prcu2 minus prcu1 divided by prcu1 okay so this will be the percentage increase into 100 so this will be the value so basically we have to try to find all these three values so prcu1 you have to try and all these values okay so now basically you know that if you take the ratios here so prcu2 will be proportional to i2 square right for example the second uh, current value is i2 so prcu will be, is pr what is rotor copper loss i square r so prcu2 will be proportional to i2 square and prcu1 that is rotor copper loss 1 will be i1 square right it will be i1 square so if you see prcu2 divided by prcu1 will be equal to or we'll just take it like this so prcu1 divided by prcu2 okay will be equal to i1 square divided by i2 square so if you are able to find the value of i1 square by i2 square you will get this ratio here and once you get this ratio it is very easy to find all these terms here so now let us see what all other information they have given okay so basically they have given that it is a uh, constant torque and voltage is dropping so how much equations we know so we'll just see what all equations you know that i is proportional to s into v right i is proportional to s into v this is one equation and the induced torque is proportional to s v square divided by r2 s v square divided by r2 but this r2 is constant here uh, just only the voltage is dropping so you can remove that term here so one thing you can note here is that if you just take this equation i1 will be proportional to s1 v1 right and i2 will be proportional to s2 v2 right so i1 divided by i2 will be equal to s1 v1 divided by s2 v2 okay this is a very important equation now so therefore i1 by i2 the whole square which is this term here i1 square by i2 square will be equal to s1 v1 divided by s2 v2 the whole square so now we have to just see whether we can find something from this particular equation so before that what you can do we can substitute one more term here so v2 is equal to 0.9 v1 right so that also we can substitute and keep here so this will be equal to s1 v1 divided by s2 into 0.9 v1 the whole square 0.9 v1 the whole square so we'll cancel all these terms at a later stage so now if you can convert s1 in terms of s2 or s2 in terms of s1 everything will cancel off and you will get finally you will get i1 square divided by i2 square so that is the basic idea of this particular numerical so we'll see whether we can do that so since the load torque is constant it's already given so we can write here s1 v1 square is equal to s2 v2 square s1 v1 square is equal to s2 v2 square so we'll write s1 into v1 square is equal to s2 into v2 is how much 0.9 into v1 0.9 into v1 whole square so clearly i can write s2 to be equal to s1 v1 square divided by uh, this 0.9 will square is 0.81 into v1 square okay so this both will go and let us see what we will get here so i uh, let me just see how much uh, value we are getting yeah so we are getting s2 to be is equal to 1.234 s1 s2 to be equal to 1.23 times s1 so clearly yeah s2 is greater than s1 naturally because uh, slip 2 is greater than slip 1 because voltage is dropping right voltage is dropping and slip uh, increases uh, if slip is increasing here sorry so s2 is greater than s1 so if s2 is s greater than s1 naturally n2 will be less than n1 that is expected when the voltage drops speed also drops so we, when you do numericals just look through all these conclusions and just remember what you have learned okay it will be very useful so you can clearly see s2 is greater than s1 okay and that means n2 will be less than n1 and why it happened because v2 is less than v1 voltage is reducing so you have got a s2 in terms of s1 okay so if we substitute that this equation here 
So you will get I1 square divided by I2 square is equal to S1 V1 divided by S2 is 1.234 S1 and into 0.9 into V1 the whole square. Okay, the whole square. So this whole square is there. So this S1 V1 can go, this S1 can go and this V1 can go. That means it is getting a little bit cluttered here. So I'll just take this and write it somewhere around here. Okay, so we can write this term like this. Um, that is uh, I1 square divided by I2 square will be equal to uh, 1 divided by 1.234 into 0.9 the whole square. Okay, I think almost the numerical is solved now. So this will be equal to 0 0.8107. So I1 square divided by I2 square is 0 0.8107. But this I1 square by I2 square is nothing but PRCU1 divided by PRCU2. PRCU1 divided by PRCU2. So you can just write uh, one of these terms in terms of the other and you can solve the numerical. So we'll just write down that now. So percentage increase in the rotor copper loss, right? That is equal to PRCU2 minus PRCU1 divided by PRCU1. Okay, so from this equation you can write uh, PRCU1 is equal to 0 0.8107 into PRCU2. Okay, so PRCU1 is equal to 0 0.8107 into PRCU2. Okay, naturally you can see uh, rotor copper loss 1 is uh, less than rotor copper loss 2 or rotor copper loss 2 is greater than rotor copper loss 1. That is expected here. So, we will substitute all this term. So, PRCU2 minus uh, this RCU1 you can write like this 0 0.8107 into PRCU2 that is rotor copper loss 2 divided by P. Uh, this also we can substitute divided by 0 0.8107 PRCU2. So, if you substitute uh, this, you will get finally the result to be equal to and if you multiply it by 100, you will get 23.3 percentage, right, per 23.3 percentage. That means when V1 reduced to uh, 90 percentage, V1 reduced to 90 percentage of V1, okay, the P rotor copper loss, P rotor copper loss increased by 23.3 percentage okay so this is the result okay so you will find these types of uh, numericals in objective questions so these are very simple equations you have to just remember two equations one is i is proportional to sv and torque is proportional to sv square divided by r2 okay and in voltage control this term is constant so you don't have to do that so from this you can see uh, s1 v1 will be equal to s2 v2 so, for, sorry here you can write this term like this so i1 is proportional to s1 into v1 I2 is proportional to S2 into V2. Okay, so you can write I2 by I1 will be equal to S2 V2 divided by S1 V1. And this relation is used in some numericals. From here you can write this torque equation S1 V1 square is equal to S2 V2 square. So basically sometimes you have to find S2 value. And from S2 you can easily find N2. So N2 is equal to Ns into 1 minus S2. So these two equations are very fundamental and if you remember that you can do all the numericals okay so i like i hope you like today's video if you like this video please like share, and subscribe to the channel until i see you in the next video it's me varun signing off and have a great day thank you now that the video is over please stay with me for 30 more seconds now the vision of this channel is to create a repository of good quality videos with crystal clear explanation regarding various topics related to electrical engineering now if you want to help me spread the word Please share this video with anyone interested in these topics. The second thing is that for me, education is a two-way process. Therefore, if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding any of the videos or regarding the channel, please put them in the comments below. We can have a healthy discussion and that way we can build a strong community of electrical engineers. So that's it for today's video. So till I see you in the next time, it's me Varun signing off and have a great day. Thank you.